Hello, this is Mark from Productive Computing and Productive Computing University. You are about to watch a selected JSON lesson from our free course called JSON Fundamentals for FileMaker Developers. Knowing how to create, parse, and manipulate JSON is essential in order to integrate FileMaker with the world of APIs, Claris Connect, artificial intelligence, and more. In this complete course, we'll cover everything you need to know about JSON from the perspective of a Claris FileMaker Pro developer. We're making this course available for free because we feel it's an important and essential building block for you to understand in order to advance your skills to the next level. And once you learn how to manipulate JSON formatted text, you are that much closer to accomplishing your first API integration in your own FileMaker apps. And like all our other courses at Productive Computing University, this course comes complete with downloadable FileMaker files for you to use and follow along with. These downloadable files are available directly in selected lessons inside the course. There's a link in the description to enroll in this free course called JSON Fundamentals for FileMaker Developers at ProductiveComputingUniversity.com. Okay, now let's dive into the lesson. In this lesson, I'd like to reinforce your firm understanding of building JSON from scratch. I'm calling this lesson Intermediate JSON, Building Nested Objects and Arrays. So what we want to do is I want to go to a particular sample JSON extract from the actual Claris FileMaker help within the JSON functions for Claris FileMaker. So I'll say FileMaker functions JSON example. And that should bring us to this help page. And it says working with JSON functions. And then they give a nice example of JSON here because this has it all. It's got nested objects. It's got an array. It's got a path to those objects. And then it has different element types between number, text, and Boolean. So if you can conjure this up from scratch by hand, then you really do have a firm understanding of at least intermediate JSON creation on the fly, done with your own two hands without using custom functions or any kind of help files. This exercise will help you get this nomenclature and building JSON to become second nature. And it makes a good practice file so that you can just roll out of bed one day, go to the data viewer and try to make this on your own without using the help or anything, just create it. So let's do that now. I will grab a quick screenshot of this because this is our end result. I'll hide the browser and we'll open up FileMaker. Let me go to the data viewer and go to the watch tab and create a brand new expression. And we'll build it right here side by side in real time so we can see and like I said, this will really help get JSON under your fingertips. So we are creating JSON. So the expression that we're going to use is JSON set element. That is your main bread and butter function for creating JSON. All right, so what do we have here? First, let's analyze it. We've got what looks like a bakery key, then colon, and then they hit us immediately with another left brace and then a product key, and then they hit us with an array, and then they hit us with an object, a JSON object, with various keys and values, and then we have a comma, and then we're hit with another object, and this is the second index of the array, so this would be index zero, index one, index two. So it seems like three objects, which in my mind is like three records, nested inside of a product key, which happens to be nested inside a bakery key. So I think they did this on purpose to show you multiple nesting opportunities in JSON, because bakery might be your file, product might be your table, and then you have the records in that table with various types of elements here, both number, text, and even Boolean. So if we can create this on the fly, then we will have accomplished a good intermediate understanding of JSON. So we have no pre-JSON to start with, so I'll just put quote, quote here. Now, technically speaking, I should be defining the type of JSON object, and you'll see a lot of times developers will use this left and right brace to absolutely clearly define that this is going to be a JSON object versus defining it this way, which would then set the stage for creating a JSON array. All right, so I'll do left, right, brace. And then we need to start working with this. 
Now, technically speaking, you sort of work from the inside out. You want to go to your lowest common dom denominator and then follow the path backwards in a case like this. Now, this is truly a tutorial example. You won't necessarily be creating JSON by hand. You'll likely be using script steps and a variety of other techniques, some of which you've already learned. But I like doing this because if you can do it raw like this, then it makes it easier to do it programmatically within a script. So we have ID, which is part of an array, which is part of this key and this key. So technically I need bakery, key, product key, and then my first record, which is an array. So let's just follow the path. I'll start with bakery. Then I'll use a dot. This tells the function that I want to go with another object or another key within that key. So product. But it isn't just product ID. You might be inclined to do this and then put a value for the ID, such as FB1 with a type of JSON string. That would be tempting. And you will get a result from that. And it looks like this. In fact, you might be saying to yourself, oh, that, that's really close. It's bakery, colon, I've got the left brace. Oh, but I don't have the array. So in order to get this to have an array, we need to actually put an array marker right here. And I could start with a zero because we know that it has to be a zero. If I started with a one, that won't return anything valuable. Then I could do this. Now, this is exactly what we need. Bakery, product, ID, FB1. Now you also notice that it isn't formatted. So let's just play with this for a second and add the formatting so that we have the formatting ongoing in this example. So for that, I will do JSON format elements. And this is just a simple function that wraps anything you have within these paragraph symbols and it formats it. So now as we follow along, we can see that, wow, we are on the right track. We've got bakery, product, colon, here's my array marker, perfect. ID, FP1. But how do we get name, price, stock, category, and special? Well, this is where we take advantage of this function's capability to put in multiple lines here or mul multiple elements. So we'll put a left bracket and a right bracket here in our function. Now, when you see these brackets, don't let yourself get confused between a bracket in a FileMaker function, which defines multiple parameters versus the bracket that we're using here, which is the actual array marker in the JSON. These brackets are traditional FileMaker brackets. This bracket indicates an actual meaningful JSON element. So between these brackets, I need to put a semicolon. I'll copy that line and paste it here. And now at this point, we still need the same key, bakery, product, zero index, name. The name is going to be donuts, and that will be a JSON string. Let me just remove that end marker and look, our JSON is being created as we speak. So I'll copy that line, paste it, put a semicolon after this one, change it from name to price. Now the price is indicated as a 199. Notice the lack of quotes here. So that's screaming out that it is a JSON number. And we have to define it as such. And that looks great. Now, what if I put JSON string? It would give me the same result. However, it would put it in quotes. And that's not what our example indicates. And quotes in a number is actually extra characters that we don't need. So if we define it as a number, then it will be interpreted as a number. So that's what I will do. Add a semicolon, paste. We'll go to stock, and that will be 43. Also a number. Semicolon, category, breads. JSON string. And our final one is special. And this is going to be true. And that will be JSON Boolean. There we go. 
Now the sort order on our results are going to be alphabetical because that's how this function works. It returns an alphabetical index of my keys, category ID, name, price, special, stock, versus ID, name, price, stock, category, special. But the results are the same, and in the eyes of JSON, it will be parsed and interpreted the exact same way. And that's the beauty of JSON. The key is indicated here, so there's no mistaking what the key is and what the value is for that associated key. So that looks good. Let me continue on this path. I'll put a semicolon because now we need our second record. So how do we indicate a second record or our second index in the array? I'll copy this entire block, paste it here, and this time I'll put a one before each of these. Then I'll take off this, and you'll see this come to life in no time at all. Now, of course, my values are not right, so let me just change and add the third one. I'm putting two returns here, not because I have to, but because it's clearer and easier to read. And this will be a two. And there we have it. I'll quickly change the values and come back. Okay, I've changed those values and now our results are in. And that completes this exercise. As a final topping to this, assuming you're using FileMaker 2024 or above, I will use the plus symbol here indicating a new JSON array. Then I'll use the colon marker. That means these lines will use the same index as the previous index used. So then here, because I need a new value for that index, we'll need a plus before each one of these new blocks. Okay, now you see we get the same results, but this time we're using the newer, more modern indicators for array setting. This saves us a little bit of script steps in the end when we learn how to use this notation. We don't have to keep track of specific numbers. That way, when I copy and paste blocks or I'm working with this, it's a little bit more modular in that I'm not having to worry about specific numbers. It just takes whatever number it's on and then increments it by one and then follows suit with the remaining keys in that object. So now open up FileMaker, have your bakery example at the ready, and begin creating this JSON with your own two hands without any help from this video or the help docs. Thanks for joining us on this lesson. To enroll in the free complete course, click on the link in the description or visit ProductiveComputingUniversity.com where you'll find both free and paid courses on today's most important topics related to the Claris FileMaker platform.